All right, so the latest way with CSS that you can build layouts is with CSS Grid. Now, this is uh, something that's been a long time coming. And effectively, it's like building a table, an HTML table, but you're doing it through CSS. So how does it work? Well, I've got a main element here with four paragraphs inside of it. And what I want to do is I want to create two columns and have the element show up one, two, three, four in the order one here, two on the right, three bottom left, and four bottom right, just like that. So let's take a look at the CSS. Now, by default, uh, I don't have anything happening with layout. Uh, I've got display flex on my paragraphs, but I'm not really doing anything with that just yet. So come in here and the main element by default is display block. What we're going to do is we're going to change that to display grid. That now gives me the ability to create columns and rows. We need to have at least the grid template columns. With grid template columns, we're going to define how many columns we want. So I could do something like this. I could say I want 300 pixels for the first column and then 200 pixels for the next column. That creates the element that I'm looking for, 300 and then 200. Now, you can use percentages, you can use pixels, you can use any unit that you would use for other elements on the page, but better than that, we have the option to use fractions. Fractions is the unit FR. So if I do, do this, 1FR, 1FR, I have just defined two columns by providing two values here. There's two columns. Each one is one fraction. You want to have a different ratio, let's say one third for this one, two thirds for this one. Well, then just the total numbers, whatever they add up to, this is one out of three, this is two out of three. That's all there is to it. You want to make a third column, which is 25%. There we go, 25, 50, and 25. One out of four, two out of four, one out of four very easy to work with, very quick to create the, the various columns. Now it will leave these blank spaces here. So if you don't have the right number and you have a different background color, have to be aware of that. Now this is where I'm starting to use flex. Once I have the grid, I've got these areas. I'm going to put this back to one and one just to make a nice square. Once I've got these defined, I can start to use some of these display flex properties. So horizontal centering inside there would be justify content and vertical is align items. So we can say, well, here, let's change this to two just to change this a little bit. Okay, so this one is going to be much taller than this one because it's narrower. What I'm going to do is I'm going to target all of the paragraphs and we'll say align items instead of top we're going to say center so now vertically centered within this space this one and this one now this one fills the entire space so the one on the the left fills the entire height you're not going to see it moving at all but anything that's smaller than that will be vertically centered or instead of center we can also use uh, Flex end will bring it down to the bottom. Flex end, flex start will bring it to the top. But center, flex start up at the top. So there we go. Justify content and line items is your vertical and your horizontal centering within each one of the grids. So this is the paragraphs themselves that I'm styling to space the content inside of whatever I'm defining up here. Now there's going to be times where you want to create a space between them. Well, we've got properties for that too. Grid column gap. So column being the key, what is the gap that I want to create between each of the column cells? If I go 1px, there we are. This line right here that's being drawn, I don't, I'm not giving it a color. It's this background color that I have here that's showing through. And that's why I put the background color here was to just to demonstrate that this gap is appearing. We can change this, make it 10, whatever number you want. And then there is also a grid row gap like that. So you can create the spaces that way. Okay. Um, just a couple of other properties. 
that I've got down here that I wanted to explain. Really, this is the majority of what you're going to use. It just makes it very easy to create columns out of your content. And so your main element, or maybe you'd have a main and an aside, and then there's a div wrapped around it. So the div that's wrapped around your main area and your sidebar, that would be what you would set to display grid. And then you create your columns and row just like this with the fractions. All right, so just a few more properties and a couple of methods as well. Grid column start. So I'm going to uncomment this line. Now, I am targeting the very first paragraph on my page. So nth of type 1, which is this paragraph right here, this very first grid. Grid column start. This is a number that defines the position where it should start. So position 1 is where it's starting. If I change this to a 2, what I'm doing is I'm pushing it over, and everything else has to then cycle down. So I've got the 4. This one's in the second column, the third, the fourth, the and so on like that. If I push it again to three, I am now forcing there to be three columns, and this one is starting in position three. Grid column end, and you can keep pushing that number up and up and up, and you can see you can get some interesting layouts that way. But there's the default. If you don't provide anything, it's going to be its normal starting position. Now for grid column end, this is defining where it should end. So 2 is where this guy is ending. It's what's the position right after this element. So right after my first paragraph, the position, the column position is 2, which is there. If I say that this is going to be 3, well, then I've pushed that other element down to here. Now this isn't creating a new column. I'm just saying push this over and then whatever comes after is in the next column because I've defined two columns up here it's going to drop down to the next line. If you want to define both the start and the end that's what this other one there's a shorthand property grid column where you can define both the start and the end and you can put a slash between them. Span will actually create a span to be put into the HTML to create this space for you. Okay, so we'll comment that out. And then the last thing I wanted to show you, the couple of methods. Uh, there is an alternative way of writing this. For each one of the values that I put inside of here, like this, you're defining a column. So if I've got four values, I have four columns. Now, we can also define something with min-max. Now, min-max is a CSS operator where you can define what's the minimum value, what's the maximum value. So I can say, at a minimum, I want the columns to be 150 pixels wide. At most, one fraction. Now, here's what I end up with with this. Because I have only defined one value. Now, I'm going to set that aside for just a moment and show you this repeat. With repeat, what we can do is we can say, I'm creating a pattern three times. I want to do the pattern that I define here. So 1FR, 2FR. Well, there's only room for a couple of these. Um, I don't have room to create the three. Two, two times. Again, I'm out of space. I'm going to um, expand this page a bit. There we are. Now you can see the one, the two, the one, the two. Like that. So two times repeat this pattern. Now in here what you can do is instead of writing them like this in place of one of these I could do this. I can put my min max inside of there. This can replace something. So whether I'm writing out a long list of fractions or values I can replace one or more with this min max method. So here's the minimum width that I'm going to allow it to be, and this is the maximum width that I'm going to allow it to be. My pattern is this one and then this. There we are, and I'm, I'm too big to, to fit right now. If you say repeat one inside of here, that's really just the same as 
writing this without the method at all. Got my comma, my comma inside of here. That's why that last thing wasn't showing up. Here we are. So there's my minimum 150, maximum one fraction, followed by two fractions. Uh, put our repeat back in here. So repeat two times this thing. There we are. So once and twice, two times that min max followed by two fractions, min max followed by two fractions. Uh, it's not showing up a lot here, but as I adjust this, um, this column is getting a little bit bigger, a little closer to the one fraction. And when we get down to the smaller size, you can see that the first and the third column are staying the same size while this one adjusts because we set that minimum at 150. So there, you can see that second and fourth column growing a little bit and the first one staying the same. All right, so we have repeat. To create patterns that are repeating, we have min max, which would be the definition for one column, providing a minimum and a maximum value for it. We've got the gaps between the rows and the columns. Display grid controlling the whole thing. Grid template columns, just uh, as the one example here, I will leave it in the comments. Grid columns, so one fraction, one fraction, one fraction. That would be three columns of equal size, if this is what I was leaving uncommented. All right, so I hope that's enough to get you started. Um, please experiment with uh, CSS grids. Very useful, very easy to use after you've tried it out a little bit and played with the properties. There's a few other properties that I haven't talked about here, but really, what I've defined here, that is what you're going to need 90% of the time to build your layout. And if you are using Flexbox, you can still use Flexbox. The properties here are still going to work within these elements right here. So we can do things like this. All right. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If this helped you, please share. And as always, thanks for watching.